I'm taking you back in time to my very first e-bike build. It's an 18 kilowatt urban super cruiser. I have a lot to pack in this video, so let's go. Now first off, I hate to do it, but I gotta hit you with that slideshow. I built this bike long before I ever thought I'd be making videos. And because of that, it's gotta be PowerPoint style, so welcome to my TED talk. I was looking for this particular frame and I actually found it used on Craigslist. The frame is made by Sick, and it is a fat tire cruiser with 7 speeds. This is a huge steel frame with tons of room for electronics. I had absolutely no idea what I was doing so I decided to get the biggest mid-drive motor I could find. My hands are actually pretty big and this is for scale. It's an 18 kilowatt motor made by Cyclone e-bikes. The motor alone weighs 24 pounds. At first I was looking at their 3 kilowatt, then I saw they had a 7.5 kilowatt and then then I found they had an 18 kilowatt motor. And more watts more better, right? And I was already running into trouble on the first step. I had to make a tool to remove the bottom bracket. It was basically welded shut. After many, many attempts, I eventually took a torch to it and that was finally what let it go. It's a good thing that this frame is so huge because I am definitely going to need the room. This is roughly where I wanted the motor and now I had to figure out how to mount it there permanently. It's probably overkill, but I decided upon aluminum brackets with steel U-bolts. U-bolts are great for mounting flat things to cylindrical things. I didn't do too much planning before, and a lot of this was just improving the angles and trying to get everything to line up correctly. Thankfully, there are quite a few mounting holes on this motor, so I had a lot of options. The original mounts to this motor are just to the bottom bracket. I didn't know what this motor was going to do, and I didn't think that was enough, so I added two more of my own mounting points with a total of three different mounting points. I think this was the most challenging part of the build, but it actually wasn't too bad and came together pretty easily. The chain ring cover was clear and I didn't think it looked that good so I painted it black. I was able to tuck the giant controller behind the seat post tube with some extra U-bolts. It fit like a glove. The next challenge was mounting the battery. I figured the best thing would be to make a shelf for it and I bought some angled steel. This steel is modular with a bunch of pre-cut holes already and I think it looks pretty cool. And mocking up where the battery is going to go. This was my huge noob mistake and that is this battery is nowhere near as powerful as it needs to be. I know so much much more about e-bikes now and that there is so much more to the power than just the motor itself. Here I'm making my own brake light switch so when you squeeze the brakes the rear brake light will turn on. This required modifying the handbrake and also making my own little brackets for it. I wanted this bike to have brake lights and turn signals and here's wiring up some of the turn signals. I wanted a cool metal case to hold the battery so I went with an army surplus ammo can. Here I'm just cutting a window for the battery meter LCD screen. And inside I'm installing the hall sensor that's going to be able to read and display the battery voltage. And now I'm just trying to figure out how to hold down this case onto the shelf that I made. I'm bending two steel straps that are going to hold it down on either side. Yes, this is a lot of steel to an already very heavy bike and more U-bolts to mount the front headlight. I made my own switchback circuit by wiring two relays and a flasher together. This was going to make the turn signals blink on and off. A lot of wiring went into the lighting systems on this bike. I was going to buy a switchback relay from this company, but they wanted like 40 or 50 dollars, so I decided I could do it a lot cheaper on my own. Here I am just testing the system and then starting to integrate it into the handlebar controls. On the front forks, I installed some daytime running lights which also doubled as some turn signals. These LEDs were massively bright, and I found a nice little spot for the step-down converter to go from 72 volts to 12 volts. And of course, more RGB strip lighting. This was back when I used those tiny little connectors, and those suck, so now I just hardwire everything. 
and here's some shots where the LED strips lit up. At this point, I was pretty much ready to wire everything up and give it some test rides. Even with the fat tires and the extra weight, this bike was still really fast. My dad always tries out my creations and this was no exception. Here it is in its working state with everything fully functional. I think it looks cool even like this, but I wanted to make everything all black. I'm taking apart the charger because I wanted to permanently affix this to the bike. That way, all you need to do is carry a power cable if you wanted to charge it somewhere else or on a longer trip. So I installed some brackets and I also wanted to paint it black. And then I just basically painted everything black. It did look cool before, but I think the all black just gives it an even more aggressive look. I know it's hard to make a beach cruiser look aggressive, but with the chopper bars and how big it is, I, I think it actually looks pretty aggressive. After all of the painting was done, the only things I had left to do was to finish up some wiring and then reassembled all of the painted components. Because I didn't know anything about e-bikes, I figured if you get a giant motor, then you're gonna get giant power. But that's not exactly how that works out. To feed that motor, you need a lot of energy and a way to discharge it very quickly. Because this battery was only 20 amp hours and had a 80 amp peak BMS on it, I was severely limited on power by the battery. So in reality, this bike was probably really only putting out about four kilowatts, which is still a ton of power for a bicycle, but nowhere near its potential. I never topped it out, but my estimation is between 45 and 50 miles per hour. And that was more than fast enough for me. If you were able to squeeze out 18 kilowatts, that chain would not last very long. You do get the benefit of gears with a mid-drive, but when you have this much power, it's really not necessary which is why all of my other e-bikes have been hub motors and I haven't looked back. Because I love dashboards, I also wanted to make one for this bike. I absolutely love stuffing more electronics and screens onto my projects. To cover the speedometer and also the lighting controls, I used my favorite tablet, the Nexus 7. For the top plate, I'm just using some black acrylic and for the main body, it's just going to be some cheapo clear. I'm also adding additional USB ports so that you could charge a phone or some other accessory while you're riding as well. I thought it came out pretty good and then I just had to figure out how I was going to mount it onto the handlebars. I just used some flat bar aluminum to mount that to the handlebars with some U-bolts and then I angled it so that you could read the display better. And here's the final finished build and I think it came out really cool. It's definitely unique. The all black with the fat tires, it just looks really industrial and I think it looks really cool. I learned a ton about e-bikes and electronics and what not to do next time. I also learned that rigid frames with no suspension going 40 miles per hour is not that comfortable. And after completing this bike, I already was on to wanting to build another one. One with a full suspension and a hub motor. I do miss this bike and I kind of want to build another one, so if you would like to see that with the knowledge I have now, let me know. Everything on this bike worked extremely well and performed flawlessly. I never had any problems with it whatsoever. I think part of this was that I just got very lucky with my component choice. All of the electronics just fit this frame like it was made for it. The fact that that controller was just small enough to fit in front of the rear tire, I mean, it's just incredible, really. I was even able to fit that enormous circuit breaker right there. Trying to fit this all on a smaller frame would have just been really hard to do. The dashboard came out really cool. You could actually change the colors of the bike from the tablet. You had a huge digital readout for the speedometer. It just came out really cool. As good as this bike looks during the day, I think with all of the lighting I threw on it, it looks even cooler in the dark. All in all, I think it came out pretty good, especially considering this was my first ever e-bike build. I'm pretty sure before this, it had been at least well over a decade since I had built a regular bicycle. I did manage to find one small snippet of video of doing a walk around in the dark, so you can't really see much, but it's, it's all I got. Let me know what you guys think. Is it ugly? Is it stupid? Is it cool? Would you ride it? What do you think? Let me know. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Going all the way to the end on this PowerPoint presentation TED Talk. I originally wasn't even going to make this video because I didn't have any video footage. I did think that this build was at least unique, so I did want to put it out there.
while this is not strictly an e-bike channel, there definitely will be more e-bike builds on this channel in the future. I'm customizing a regular ThinkPad X230 laptop and paying homage to one of the greatest cyberpunk movies of all time. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.